Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at um, module one, which was matrices from the 2018 Further Maths Exam 1 from NHT. <clears throat> so question one, um, we've got here the mat this matrix here um, is an example of what? And what you need to look for in this one so let me roll, is where you've got the main diagonal and you've got a bunch of um, numbers underneath there. So in this case, this is an example of a triangular matrix, okay? In specific, this would be a lower triangular matrix, but they're not asking for that definition. It's just that de detail. So this would be a triangular matrix. So consider um, the matrix equation below. We need to work out what W is. So what we need to look at here is it's an addition. So Basically, whatever here, whatever is here, is going to be a two by two matrix, and whatever is in these spots has to, when I add that, has to add up to six, two, seven, and zero. So let's look, work out what this one would be here. So here, I'd have two times. Remember, it's a scalar uh, multiplication, so it'd be six, it would be eight, it would be zero and it would be um, minus two, okay? So, if I wanna go from six to six, so that's basically what, what we need to do is, you don't need to write as many times as I've just done now, plus this number here, so I shouldn't put a zero there, six plus whatever number is there, needs to equal six. In this case, it would be zero. Zero, so that means I can rule out these two. I can rule out D and E pretty quickly. For um, this position, I need to go, I need to have, I've got zero plus a number gives me two, so that would have to be two. So that rules out that one. And then I have to look at, I'm going from eight, to seven, so sorry, I'm going from eight, I'm gonna end up with seven, so the number in here has to be minus one, and in this case, um, I'm going from, uh, where am I? I'm gonna have minus two, and I'm gonna end up with zero, and so therefore minus two plus two would give me two, so that would give me that one there, so my answer would be B, okay? So that's a sort of using your understanding of um, addition, scalar modification of um, scalar mo matrix modification and ad addition of um, matrices. All right, so Haley uses a um, password given there to unlock her computer. She uses a permutation matrix to scramble this password as shown in the matrix product below. And this is, so it's a, um, this is my permutation matrix, and this is my matrix, we'll call it Q. Doesn't matter what you wanna call it here. So in the, this format, P, Q, that means it's going to be a row permutation. So that means if my um, thing here is my position for say this one here is gonna be, for example, A, or the, uh, we'll call it, the element a1 4 that means I move row 4 to row 1 okay so in this case row 4 is this one here that moves up to row 1 so that's what's going to be up there so the next one here so let's go 1 4 this would be 2 uh, 2 4 6 2 6 Okay, so two six would give me, so that means if I've got two six, it means six is going to two. So six down here, the number two, so cross that out, that's going to row two. And at the moment, so far, I can get rid of that one, that one, and that one. And that one at the moment, I've actually got my, my answer D from that quickly. But if you wanted to see it, for example, 
this one here would be three five so that means I'm going from five to three so that and symbol as you can see that's what I've got oops that's a really bad and symbol um, or at symbol I should say let me actually draw a better I won't do it more but that's you, you, I think you get the right the idea now this would be maybe I will do them four threes that means I'm going from three to four so then I get the um, so three is going to position four so that's a dollar sign I'll get rid of that and if you do this one here it's going to be five two so two goes to five so two goes to the fifth one and call it a h is going to be there because that's going to go from uh from in this case this case because that's six one that means one is going to six okay so that would mean i get a h down there all right all right let's move on next question the diagram below shows the results of a chess competition between four players asher bay <coughs> cam and Triker. i'm sure that's how you say the name each completed competitor played each of the other com competitors only once the anger the arrow in the diagram indicates the winner of each match so for example d so Draco beats asher so that's how you'd read that okay um well, I use the example of A to C. Uh, the two-step dominance in this competition can be shown as a matrix where the winner is a person who has a two-step two-step dominance over the loser. Okay, so this one we need to work out what our initial um, uh, one-step dominance of the in matrix. So let's do that now, and then we can get the two-step dominance relatively easy after that. Okay. So let's put a matrix up here. I'm going to go A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. I'm going to put this in a different color. So I'm going from here. I'm reading across to here. So I'm going to go Asher didn't beat Asher. So I'm going to put a zero. Asher from here did, did not beat um I can't remember their names. Did not beat Bay. Asher did beat, so going to arrow that, going that direction, did beat Cam. So we put a one there. Asher did not beat Dryker, because remember, I'm going to go against, so that gives a zero. Bay um, did beat Asher. Bay did not beat themselves. Bay uh did beat cam and bay did not beat so it's going the wrong way for that bay did not beat Riker, so zero and i'm just going to quickly do the rest if you can look at cam everything for cam everything's coming towards cam and can't beat themselves so they all get a zero across there and drika if you look at what drika <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, happened with Dryka, they're beating A, they're beating C, they're beating B, and they can't beat themselves. So basically it's one, 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 and zero. So that is our, our, our essentially our first death dominance. Okay, and so what you do now is you take that one step dominance, which is, so I've moved some stuff into here, that's this part here, and then I square it, okay? And what you get is this is your answer so that is your two-step dominance so now you go back and compare and see and see which one it matches and in this case you'll see that it matches a all right so let's go next question all right the target in a game is a circle divided into three regions Inner, inner, middle, and outer. The diagram below shows um, these regions and the number of points awarded for hitting each region with a ball. 
The number of inner mid all nether regions hit by Mustafa and Neville in one game is shown in a table below. Neville was the winner of this game. Which one of the following matrix calculations shows the difference between um, the winning and losing scores? So in a question like this one, what you'd look for is the fact that you've got Mustafa and Neville with their inner and mid and outer, um, their, uh, what they've got, how many of those they've got. Oops, sorry. Right. Sorry about that, just had some technical issues there. So we're well, looking if you've got Mustafa with those ones, but each of those sections, so the inner and middle and the outer have a specific point. So basically what you want to look for is you want to know what basically, you're looking for the difference between Mustafa and Neville. So you're going to be looking that, basically subtracting that to start with, because you want to know how many, how many inner, 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 um, so any regions were, were hit by each player, how many middles and how many outers. So the, the ones you can do have it look like that. It's not this one because you want that first. You want to know how many games because then you multiply it by what their points are. So that gets rid of that. It gets rid of um, this one here. And it gets rid of this one here. They're in the wrong form. We want it in the six, seven, two, because you'd go, you've got to think about it. Six, seven, two, for example. And if I had multiplied by, for in this case, I'm um, just to sort of make it clear, eight, three, one, it'd be eight times six, in this case, plus three times seven, plus one times two. That's telling you how many points they've scored total. Okay. Because if you if you think about it, this is a one by three. This is a three by one matrix. So when I multiply them, I get a one by one, which is my answer. All right. So that's why you're looking for something that has it looks something that looks like this. Okay. Because remember, oh, not that one. I got in the wrong order. That was in the right spot because I wrote the thing here. I'll change these ones. You get five, nine, seven, and that's in, in terms of your matrix. And then you've got to multiply that. So that's why this one is wrong because B is wrong because that's the only multiplication you're doing. So it's going to be in this case C. All right. Solution to the simultaneous equation, simultaneous linear equation, is determined by evaluating the matrix product. One of these linear equations could be, and let's work that out. So in this one, what you've got to remember is this is a simultaneous equation. So you've got your x, y there. We'll just call that matrix, matrix x for the moment. It's probably not the best way to do it, but this would be like our a to negative 1, and we'll call that b. Okay? So how you would have written that before, basically it would have been a x equals b all right so basically all you need to do is because you're going back from this back to oops from that to there <coughs> you're getting the inverse of that matrix so what you need to do now then is do basically do the inverse of this matrix and you'll get your you'll get an answer that looks like oops it looks like this okay so what you can read from that is that's like saying 2x 3y 3x 4y so 2x 3y equals 3 okay 3x plus 4y equals minus 1 so what you're looking for is do we have a 2x plus 3y equals three yes we do okay and we can check the other ones that don't match either of those two so that's where you'd pick c for that one there okay a company um has selected 200 of its regular customers to rate its performance every month the rating given by a customer can be poor good or excellent customers are expected to change their rating from month to month as shown in transition matrix there 
The expected number of each rating received over n months can be determined by this recurrence relation shown there. So where and so S0 is January. Okay. What percentage of these 200 customers is not expected to change a rating in February? So keep in mind, so S1 would be February. So that's what we've got to keep in mind for this one, okay? Um, so what's important in this one? So it's good to work out and say that what S1 equals, because that might help, it help later on as well. But in this question here, it's it's a little a little bit tricky, but it's keeping you in, in working out what you've, what's going to happen here. So remember, it goes from this month to next month. P. So basically, to go from poor to poor, 02 percent of twenty of forty aren't going to change. 03 of hundred and ten are not going to change. So let's go to. 0.2 times 40 aren't going to change, plus 0 0.3 times 110 aren't going to change, because you can treat that 20 at 0.2 as like 20%, plus 0.3 of 50. Okay, that will give you an answer of 56. That is a 5, just so people don't get confused. And so 56, and there's 200, so 56 divided by 200 times 100 will equal 28%. So in this case, the answer would be A. All right, in the long term, the number of these 200 customers who are expected to change a red in each month from excellent to good is closest to is these answers given here. But long term, this is a bit of a giveaway. Long term is steady state. Okay. So we have to at least do a steady state calculation in here. All right. So let me put a steady state calculation in there. So here is the steady state. So I've taken my, if we go back up to this equation here. It's instead of a recurrence, so if I said, oops, if I said here, it's Sn equals T to the N S, okay? So when we do a steady state, we want a large number. So our large number could be 50, could be 100. I put 15, so I said S50 equals T to the 50. That's my 50 times s and this is the answer again i really wanted to, to do to two decimal places so i can get rid of those okay so that's what i'm getting when i do that calculation all right so that's like my s50 number all right but what the question's asking okay is that i want to know how many so how many have gone from here, from here to here? And that's represented by that 0.5 we've got there. Okay. Now, that's not the answer. The answer we've got here is, if you think about it, if you look at what we've got in our thing here, Is that we're looking at our excellent because the excellent because remember it's at steady because it's at steady state this is what how many we're saying are changing overall from excellent or who are, there's 59.32 every month who it, um, have rated something at excellent but we want to know how many of those each month go to change into good and we saw that from the 0.5 up here as i said before the 0.5, so 0.5 of this number are going to make, um, are going to go from excellent to good. And so half of 59.32 would be A, 28. So the answer is A in that case.